Hello there, my name is Richard from Silent Peak Photo and welcome to this Luminar Neo review of 2023. This time we're taking a look at the latest version of Luminar Neo, at least as of March 2023, which for reference is version 1.71. So let's get to it. So we begin our Luminar Neo review in our catalog view. Here we've got some rudimentary photo management. For instance, we can right click on any given photo and we can mark it as favorite, rejected or unmarked. And we can also create various different albums and drag our photos into those albums. You can create as many albums as you like and you can place any single photo in any amount of albums you like. The other thing we can do as well is search for photos. So we can click on this magnifying glass here and search for a photo by folder, name, date extension. So in this case, I'm going to type in seal and look for all photos with seal in the file name. And there we go. But in terms of photo management, this is the extent of Luminar Neo. It's entirely sufficient for sort of average size photo collection. But if you were hoping for various different more advanced features, such as keyword tagging, face recognition, geo tagging, that sort of thing. Luminar Neo does come up a little bit short. Now, having picked an image to process, so let's pick an image. The easiest way to edit a photo in Luminar Neo is via presets. Now, if you're just looking for great results without actually editing a photo, Luminar Neo's presets are pretty tough to beat. So whenever you open up uh, an image in presets, it will recommend which preset collection it thinks will work best for your image. So in this case, Luminar Neo has recommended easy landscapes, scenery, and filmatic. So let's begin with easy landscapes. Each collection features usually between five and six separate presets. Uh, there's about 20 collections altogether, meaning that Luminar Neo comes with about 100 presets. And to preview each preset, the only thing you have to do is you wave your mouse over it. And as you can see, we're getting our different one. Now, I really like Snowfall on this particular picture. And I'm going to like it so much, I'm going to mark it as a favorite. And by marking it as a favorite, Whenever I go into presets, I have this favorites option here and I can see there I've got snowfall. And of course, if I like, I can unmark it as a preset. Now let's say, for example, we really like our edit. We've done our preset and we want to sort of replicate that preset to another photo. Well, we can. So what we can do is we can right click on any edited image. We can go to adjustments copy adjustments click on the image we wish to copy those adjustments to adjustments paste adjustments and what that will do is whatever we've done to this photo will be replicated to that photo in this demonstration because i want to keep this luminar neo review short i've done it to one photo however i could have copied the adjustments from this photo to many many photos simply by highlighting multiple photos so if you ever want to revert an image, I can just go to adjustments and revert image, and then I can apply my own adjustments. Now you can use the preset as a head start and then apply your adjustments over the top of it. But in this case, I'm going to go straight to edit and begin editing my out of camera original raw file. Now the edit mode in terms of Luminar Neo, perhaps the star of the show is enhance AI. And with Accent AI, what we can do is we just move the slider and the whole photo just starts to look better. There's no need to know exactly what it's doing. It just looks good. And again, it just leans into the idea that Luminar Neo uses artificial intelligence to do the thinking for you. For your part, you just need to dial in the amount that you want. Again, another example of this is Sky Enhancer AI. It automatically adjusts the sky. It leaves the rest of the photo intact because Luminar AI, Luminar Neo, sorry, knows the difference between the sky and the ground. It doesn't need you 
to tell it. But let's say we want a little bit more box office, which after all is what Luminar Neo is known for. We have things like Sky AI. With Sky AI, what we can do is simply trade one sky for another. So for this photo, it appears it's recommending one of these two, but I'm gonna try something a little bit more dramatic. I'm gonna try a dramatic sunset. Now I haven't tried this up front, so I don't know how it's gonna look. Let's find out together. And there we go. Now, not only does SkySwap insert a new sky, but it also relights the scene. So if we sort of bounce from the original, you can see that the grass itself has also been relit and where applicable, it will also um, add reflections of the new sky as well. Say if you're on a wet beach and you've got reflections, it will actually cast the new sky's reflections onto those surfaces. In this case, the sky reflection has been very good, if not quite perfect, and we have various adjustments we could have to tidy that up. We've also got traditional tools. For, so, for those of you who are much happier using exposure, contrast, tone curves, you are catered for here. So we can add in our own tone curves. We can do all of that traditional stuff. But the point with Luminar Neo is that you don't necessarily have to. You can but you don't have to. At any point, we can take an image and revert it back to the original. Now, aside from sky replacement, we have all the usual sort of tricks, adding sharpness and structure. We can erase objects, we can convert to black and white. We've got various different landscape enhancements. So for example, we can add a little bit of golden glow, sort of give it a little bit of warmth to our image. And we've also got foliage enhancer as well, which identifies and enhances just foliage while leaving the rest of the image alone. So just between these two options and say a little bit of sky enhancer, we can go an awful way without ever having to really know what we're doing. So Luminar Neo is great for landscape photography. Let's try a little bit of portraiture. So we'll begin with this photo here. So the first thing I would do with a portrait, I like to add a little bit of a vignette. I feel like it adds contrast to the subject. Top tip guys, if you're new to this game. But let's have a look at the more advanced features. So Relight AI. This is new to Luminar Neo, as in it does not feature in Luminar AI. And what that enables us to do is brighten our subject. So Luminar Neo automatically determines a foreground from the background and gives us independent control of them both. And here I brightened up my subject while the background remains the original shade. So I'll go to the extreme so you can see it and I can also darken, so ideal for backlit portraits. And I can also dim the background, so let's dim the background. So you can see we're getting quite a transformative effect and we can also adjust the depth and we can use uh, a little bit of warmth as well. So let's add a bit of near warmth. So this should warm up the foreground a little bit and also we'll cool down the background. And if we have a look at the original photo, this is what we began with. This is what we've got now. I'm not saying these edits are any good, by the way. I'm just sort of showing what Luminar Neo can do. We've also got various different dramatic tricks, potentially more suitable for landscapes, but we've got them and you might as well use them. So key to Luminar, the reason why you buy Luminar Neo over another photo editor is its AI tricks and in portraiture, it is incredibly well stocked. So this is not a great example, so forgive me. The background is already quite blurred on this image, but I can make it even more blurrier. So if you tend to have a lot of smartphone photos where background blur is a little bit more difficult, Luminar Neo's background blur facility is really gonna help you out quite a lot. There's all kinds of things we can do. We can add the severity of the blur. So I'm gonna just dial everything to 100. We can make the background um, darker, a bit like with Relight AI. 
or we can make it brighter. We can add highlights glow, so that means any sort of specular highlights will start to pop. We can make the background a bit warmer. We can adjust the depth. So this is making the depth of field even shallower or even deeper, depending on what sort of creative effect that you're trying to do. You might have noticed those with keen eyes as I am getting some clipping here that can be corrected with manual brushing or edge correction. But I don't really want to waste your time on that at this point. I just kind of want to show you quickly what the potential is for this system. So I'm going to revert it back to original. And finally, show you uh, Face AI. So Face AI, it is a sort of vanity tool on one hand, but it does sort of correct for some practicalities in photography. For example, lighting doesn't always go our way. And Face Light AI, I really enjoy it. It just means that if I do have some uneven lighting, Face Light AI can really make that face sort of pop out. You've also got the option to slim face. I'm not particularly fond of these features. But they do have a practical application in that if you're suffering severe selfie distortion or perhaps you've been photographed to the edge of a frame with a wide angle lens, your features aren't going to be your own and you can use features like this to correct them. We can also add, we can enlarge eyes, we can whiten the eyes a little bit. We have an eye enhancer which will just sort of make those eyes pop a bit. Again, this is a really nice feature that can overcome poor lighting. Got a dark circles removal, which just sort of overcomes the night before, I guess. And improved eyebrows, just adds a little bit of extra definition. Obviously with portraiture, we are drawn to the eyes and these features can sort of make your photo pop just that little bit more. We also have mouth, we can do uh, lip saturations, effectively uh, a bit like lipstick, redness. We can darken them. And we can also whiten teeth as well. So if you're after some new pearly whites, this is a lot cheaper than going to the dentist. Skin AI, exactly what it sounds. So basically it's airbrushing, but it's airbrushing for the 21st century. We don't actually brush anymore. Luminar Neo will automatically identify your subject and its face and automatically apply the adjustments in their proper place. Shine removal, we've all been in portraits where for some reason we look sort of shiny. This will help with that. And skin defects AI will sort of remove moles. I do find this intermittent in that it can odd can remove natural features, but we can tick it or tick it off, see what we think. And finally, body AI, we can adjust the shape of the person so we can make them slimmer, we can make them wider. Again, can be used for vanity or to correct some kind of optical distortion. Now, the final thing I would like to show you is layers. So, unlike Luminar AI and like the early Luminar 4, we can blend multiple images together. Now, I'm not going to do that in this review, but what I will do is add some fancy effects. So, we've got sparklers, stardust, bokeh, light leaks. Flares. I'm going to add a flare, I'm going to add this one here, and I'm going to adjust its properties, so I'm going to make its opacity 100%, and we can also change its blending type, so we've got darken, lighten, for those of you who are familiar with Photoshop will be fully aware of this, but I think it worked best on screen, and Yes, in case you're wondering, we can absolutely pile these effects on. So let's add another one as well. And now we're ending up with something very uh, sort of 10 years ago on Instagram. Now, as you can see, one of the main complaints for Luminar Neo is speed. Now, for what it does for as few clicks, I find Luminar Neo pretty fast, at least sufficiently fast. However, I am fully aware that not everybody feels the same and that performance does vary from hardware to hardware. Thus, I strongly recommend if you are considering buying Luminar Neo that you check out the free trial in the description below. It's 14 days, no credit card, no catches. Luminar Neo is also particularly cheap when you compare it to the competition, in particular to what it can do and how easy it makes it do. In my opinion, Luminar Neo is one of the best photo editors and almost certainly 
the best photo editor for beginners or for experts in a rush. New to Luminar Neo as well, but not included, is the Luminar Neo extension pack. Now that's very much its own review and I have reviewed those products separately. So please check that out. But just to give you an overview, for a bit extra cash, you can get Noiseless AI, which will denoise your photos. Super Sharp AI, it's sharpener and motion blur canceller. You have Upscale AI, which will increase the resolution of your photos by using AI interpolation. You've got a Focus Stacker, HDR Merge, Magic Light AI, which is uh, adds extra flashness to your uh, light points. And finally, an AI background removal tool. But so far, this is the latest version of Luminar Neo. It's maturing very nicely. It has now got all the features it was ever supposed to have, but yet remains in development. And there's some new stuff coming down the pipe, which we can talk about later. Anyway, I hope that was useful. Please check out the links in the description below. Give this a go. Let me know what you think. And I do wish you a very good day. Bye-bye.